In this video, I'm going to go over how to make a professional looking dashboard without the need of using any complex formulas or programming or, or coding. Um, and so I've got a sample database that uh, you can download if you want to follow along. And so what I'm going to do is use this data set to create some pivot tables and then link them together in one, one dynamically updating dashboard. And so I've already set up a named range for my data set. So the first thing I'm going to do is make two tabs, one for the data and the pivot tables, and the other one I'm just going to call it the dashboard. Okay. And so on the data tab, I'm going to start by creating a pivot table. And my named range is data set one. And the first thing I'm going to do is get all the sales by month and so just plopping in the dates on the rows and then the sales dollars in the value section of the pivot table now excel 2016 had automatically grouped my dates in a month and you can change how it's grouped if you right click on the row labels and select group it gives you an option so you can see days and months are selected i could actually uncheck days because i just want to see the months so, but if you had multiple years you want to compare against, you can click off years as well. I'm just gonna leave it at months and hit okay. And then the sales, the sales numbers, I'm just gonna change the formatting on this, the value field settings, number format, and accounting, just so that way it looks a little, looks a little better when, you know, looking at, at the numbers and easy to see thousands and, and hundreds. And so now that I've um, set up my pivot table, the next thing I'm going to do is turn it into a chart. So there's a pivot chart button here. I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to leave it with the cluster column by default. Now, the one thing I don't like about pivot charts is they have these ugly gray buttons here. And so if I go to the analyze tab, I can unclick the field buttons and that disappears. And because these are totals, I don't need a legend. And what I'm also going to do is fix the gap on um, on the data, format the data series. I'm gonna change the gap width here. No, you can't see it, but I'm gonna change it to 50%, just so it's a little fatter. And add a label for total sales, bold it. And for the border, I'm just gonna get rid of the outline. And so now, got my first, um, First chart set up, and I'm going to copy this over, cut and paste it to my dashboard. So I've got it on there. And what I'm also going to do on, on this tab is I'm going to get rid of the grid lines. Okay. And now that I've got that set up, that's my first pivot table. What I'm going to do is now make another pivot table based on the same data set. And in this case, I'm going to look at sales by product. So I'm going to drop in sales dollars again. I'm going to put product in the row section. And again, I'm going to change the formatting. So it's an accounting formatting. And now again, I can convert this into a pivot chart again. And this time I'm going to go with a 3D pie chart. And again, I'm going to cut and paste this into the dashboard right away. And I'm going to go through the same steps I did before, getting rid of the field buttons, um, getting rid of the border, and then what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to add data labels. And I'm going to format these data labels. So I have the category name as well as the percentage. But obviously, you can set it up however you want. I just want to get rid of this, this legend because it's not really useful when you have this many categories. And now here, I'm going to name this sales by product. And I can put this a little bit higher up. There we go. So that one's, that one's nicely in there. So now that's pivot table two. I'm going to do a couple more. So I insert another pivot table. And the great thing about a named range is I don't have to select the, the range anymore. And so this one, I'm going to do sales by store time, by store. So I have data, sales. And now again, I'm going to change my field settings. So the number format is accounting again. And ready to convert it again into a pivot chart. 
and this time I'm going to do a bar chart just so it's a little different than the other ones. Again, cut and paste onto here. And again, go to analyze, get rid of the buttons. I'm going to change the gaps again, format data series. I normally set the gap width to 50%. And again, I because these are totals, I don't need a legend. And I'm also going to get rid of the, the border again. And because this is already already blue, I'm going to change the uh, change the color scheme to orange, and call this sales by store. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm going to do my, uh, my final pivot table. Go to the side. You want to make sure these pivot tables don't um, overlap, because then if uh, by chance, when you run a filter and it, it expands it, then it's going to give you an error message. So just to be careful about that. If you've got a lot of rows and columns, then you want to, you might even want to put them on separate sheets. Data set one again. And this time, this is going to be my most complex pivot table. It's going to have sales rep and store type. So that stores here, sales rep in the columns, and then once again, total sales. And then again, I'm going to change the value field settings again. And the reason I go through field settings is this changes it even if I refilter it because you could select the entire column and change it to accounting. But then when you rerun the, the pivot table, when you refresh it or apply filter to it, then, then the formatting is going to revert back to what it was. So I've got my pivot table set up. I'm going to do again, um, insert a chart. And this time I'm going to do a stacked column chart. So that way I can see um, the different makeup of the, of the stores get rid of the buttons again and I'm going to change the design of it so that the legend is at the bottom okay and again I'm going to do control X control V and again I'm going to get rid of my border okay and in this case I'm gonna add a chart title of the chart I'm gonna call this sales by rep and store and with with this one set up this one's the most complicated so i'm going to try to stretch it a little bit more so you can see it and again i'm going to change i want the data series again to get rid of the gaps a little bit okay so the pivot tables and pivot charts they're all set up to go but right now they don't really do anything special these are just regular regular charts but what I'm gonna do now is add slicers which really are what sort of make these dashboards oops uh, turns them into turns them into you know dynamic dashboards that'll update right away based on your selections so if I select one of these uh, one of these charts I'm gonna go to insert and let's hit slicer I'm gonna hit uh, you know, on store, salesperson, product. And I actually want month in there as well, but grab that in a second. So that's store in here. And so when you're, when you're editing a, a slicer, I mean, you can see right here, this is not really practical. You don't want to stretch this all the way down just to make a selection, but under options, you can put the number of columns you want. So I'll put three columns because these are not really long strings, so it'll fit easily. Um, same thing for sales rep. I prefer it so it's across the top here. I could even do four columns there. Product, same sort of thing. So you know, I'll try to line it up a little bit here. Okay. And then the one thing I was going to add is I forgot I should have added the... Uh, I'm going to make sure that all these have a date link to them. There we go. So that way when I update the pivot table, it factors in the date as well. So what I do is insert another slicer for the date. So I want to make sure they all are updated based on the date selection. Okay. So now all of these slicers are now 
set up. Obviously, you can space out a little bit more, however you, however you want, for the sake of appearances. So I'm just going to make it so that all the charts fit nicely on here. Okay. Okay. And stretch this one out a little bit more, so I get all the ones in there. Options. And now with slicers, if, if you see options like this that are faded out, that just means you can't make that selection, that you don't have any data that um, those filters would be able to pick up. So if you're wondering why some of them might be faded out, that's why. So I'm going to pull these over a little bit so there's no overlap. Oops. Okay, so that... Let's stretch this one out just so it's even. Okay, and now so I've got my charts, I've got my slicers. Um, so the beauty of, uh, of a slicer is you know you select it and it'll filter your, your pivot chart based on those selections. But to make this really dynamic, I'm going to go to um, report connections and I'm going to check all the pivot tables on here. And this way it'll be linked to every single one of them. And so that way when I make a selection or store A, now all of my charts change, as opposed to just just the one. So that's the really cool thing about linking slicers to your, to your pivot charts and pivot tables is they can make the changes uh, across the board. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing for each one of these slicers. And the key thing that makes this work is I've got the same range set up for all these pivot tables, because if my ranges, um, like I, I use data set one, my named range, but if I, if that wasn't the case, if I if I had uh, different sources for these pivot tables, then it wouldn't be able to to connect, you know, as dynamically uh, to this. Because otherwise, now when I make a selection, like let's say I wanted to see the sales for stores A, B, and C, so I can hit Control on my keyboard, select B, and select C. And now my chart updates based on those selections. So everything that I see now are sales by product are for stores A, B, and C. If I go by sales rep and store, you can see I only have sales A, stores A, B, and C, store A, B, and C, right? And so let's say I wanted to see the sales in these three stores that were made by, let's say, sales rep A. So now I see all of sales rep A's sales in these three stores, you know, year to date. The, oops, the product mix. And if I wanted to say, see only a few months, let's say I select April, May, actually I did the opposite here. Hold on a second. If I select April, May, and July, I guess you didn't have any in, in June, and that's why you see June and September are, are great out there because there's nothing that fits that criteria. So now you can see, you see all of the sales that Rep A made in stores A, B, and C for these three months. So that's, that's the beauty of setting it up with uh, with a dashboard like this and setting all the links up is the the user can, you know, drill down however they like and um, see the different uh, see the different charts based on their their selections. And you don't have to go one by one. So that's a that's a quick and easy way to set up a, a dashboard that uh, you know you can use in a variety of different ways. I mean Obviously, you can select the, the charts to look however you want and, um, you know, the different chart types. The key thing is using the same data source and, um, and then, yeah, just a matter of making pivot tables. And that's why I also put the pivot tables all on one tab as well, just so they're not getting in the way because you don't want to see pivot tables in the background on, on the dashboard. And so, so I hope you found this useful and uh, thanks for watching.